There's a classic Old Testament story in the book of Daniel about three guys who were told to bow down before an idol, and they refused. Here's how it went down. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon made a gold statue of himself 90 feet tall. He gathered all the important governmental officials together for a dedication of the statue, and he told them when the trumpets sounded they were to bow down and worship it. And if they didn't, they would be thrown into a fiery furnace. Three of these officials were some Jewish men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Any VeggieTales lovers out there? This is Rack, Shack, and Benny we're talking about. Being good Jews, they knew that one of the Ten Commandments said they were to never bow down before an idol. The king made sure they understood that if they refused, they would be thrown to the fire. Their response? If our God wants to save us, then we'll be saved. But even if we aren't saved, we won't bow down. Do what you have to do. I'm Jesse. Welcome back to Theocademy's Confirmation Series. In our last lesson, we talked about sin and how we as humans rarely live up to the ideal that God has for us. But what might that look like specifically? One of the great themes of our tradition has an answer for us. The Book of Order says that human beings have a tendency to participate in two things, idolatry and tyranny. Basically, idolatry is when we worship anything that is not God and tyranny is when we act like we are the ones in charge instead of God. It may sound funny to say that we worship idols, but in our day, it's not quite that literal. To worship an idol today means that we trust something other than God to save us. Tyranny is like that too. I'm assuming most of you are not going to grow up to be tyrannical dictators, but we are tyrannical anytime we decide that we are the ones who know what needs to be done, and we stop at nothing to do it. But what about this tendency word? What does it mean that we have a tendency to do these things? I think what it means is this. I don't think you have any desire to be a bad person. In fact, I think that you want to be the best person you can possibly be. I know that's true for me, so I have to think that's true for you too. But what Presbyterians have come to believe is that we have this tendency, a natural inclination to just screw things up. We don't mean to, we just do. To use our archery metaphor again, even though we want to hit the center of the target, our tendency is to miss it. And we miss it by not trusting God or by relying only on ourselves. Ask the pastor. I don't worship idols. I pray to God. Do I need to worry about this? Mm. I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. We have this idea that idols are just like that golden calf that Mm -hmm. they build in Exodus. But for us, rather than something that we cast in bronze or make out of gold and Mm -hmm. set up on an altar and worship, um, there are many, many things that we choose to give our allegiance to other than God sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have wooden or stone idols anymore like they did in Old Testament times, but we have plenty of idols. And yeah, we need to worry about it. Because while you may not actively worship idols, the odds are you have idols in your life. There are probably other things that you end up lifting up as more important than God without meaning to. I happen to know that you are a lover of Barcelona, the soccer team, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you know how good Lionel Messi is, right? He's kind of, he can be an idol, right? Mm Mm-hmm. You don't pray to him, but he's up there, right, in your pantheon of great soccer players. And that team is incredible, right? So sometime you might be tempted to choose to um, watch Barcelona play Real Madrid on a Sunday morning instead of go to church. Worship at the feet of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo instead of at the foot of Jesus. I don't have any power, I'm just a kid. I'm not sure I can be a tyrant, can I? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you have been a tyrant. (laughs) I'm sure you have thrown yourself on the floor and said, I want that. (laughs) 
edit that out, please. Um, no. Anytime you use what you have um, to cause less than the best uh, to come to others, um, you're engaging in a, in a tyranny. We're all tyrants sometimes. We all want what we want um, when we want it. So I think this may be getting to the idea that we're part of systems that, that may oppress people without us necessarily having a lot of control over that and being able to name that is helpful. So now I know some people who are big fans of American Idol. Is oh. that bad? I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> the show American Idol, you love it? Wait, what? <laughs> now I love American Idol, is that bad? No, that is an awesome show. So uh, by all means, watch away. Okay. Hey mom, whoa, cookies. No sir, those are not for you. But gingerbread cookies are my favorite, you know that. I do indeed, but they are not for you. I made them for the party tonight, which I need to get ready for. Do not touch the cookies. Gerard, Gerard. Gerard! No, stop it. Gerard! I'm serious, you have to leave me alone. Come on, just one bite, she'll never know. You're the devil. Nope, just your favorite treat, Gerard! Gerard! Gerard, what did I tell you? But they were calling to me, Mom. I couldn't help myself. You're amazing. You just want what you want when you want it. Ugh, I swear, I live in a house full of tyrants. I love you, Gerard. I love you too, gingerbread man. I want you to notice something. Until the last lesson, we haven't really focused on sin hardly at all. Sure, in our lesson on grace, we made mention of all the monumentally stupid, selfish, and hurtful things we've done and let happen, but we only talked about it as a way of making a big point about God's grace. That was on purpose. Presbyterians aren't scared to talk about sin. We're not afraid to admit that left up to our own devices, we do things that are sinful. Don't get me wrong. We're not happy about it. It's not like we sit around and plan sin fests or anything, but we freely admit that we're 10 pounds of suck in a five pound bag. The only reason we can talk so openly about this is because we know about God's grace. We know that when we screw up, and we will screw up, that we don't have to worry about being thrown into the fiery pit of hell. That's just not a thing for us. And this recognition allows us to constantly try to be more like Jesus Christ. We can only learn things when we admit that we have something to learn. It's like if you only spoke English and went to live in a place where they only spoke Portuguese. Even though you'd be trying hard to communicate in the new language, sometimes you're going to slip and say something in English. That's what it's like with sin. The only way you can get better in the new language of grace is if you can acknowledge that sometimes you slip back into the language of sin. People who can't admit their mistakes are irritating, aren't they? So let's just be honest. There are times when we trust someone or something other than God. And there are times when we act like big bullies and try to get our way. I figure if it takes us a little less time tomorrow to admit it than it did today, we're on the right path.